I call on government order of the day. Adjourn debate on the Prime Minister's statement. Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, I am pleased to resume the debate on the Prime Minister's statement as part of an energetic government with a wide-ranging reform program. You would think we would just got in. There is so much going on with this government, Mr Speaker. For instance, the most comprehensive reforms of the Resource Management Act, uh, the regulation of water quality and the necessary changes in farming practice will unfold over the next few years at the core of our productive economy. Uh, changes in housing, which will lead to greater supply for more low- and middle-income families, and continued efforts to implement the changes in workplace safety flowing uh, back to the original uh, Pike River tragedy. And Mr Speaker, on the 1st of April, despite the fact that the government is running the tightest control on expenditure we've seen in several decades, there will be on the 1st of April more paid parental leave. There will be on the 1st of April further significant reductions in ACC levies. And what does that mean? What it means for all those people on lower incomes who register their car and license it, it'll get, they'll get that done for about $100 a year less. More than many of them uh, have had in increases in benefits or national super. Uh, just one small change and a raft of improvements coming on the 1st of April, including free doctor's visits for children under the age of 13. Mr Speaker, these are, these are issues we campaigned on successfully, and I'm proud that we'll have the opportunity now to implement those, uh, implement those changes. Mr Speaker, can I welcome back the opposition? Uh, I thought they'd make a coherent start to the year, but the Prime Minister summed it up in a sentence yesterday when he said, uh, after we've done Ratna and Waitangi, that uh, Labor's position now is Māori can make their own laws, but they're not allowed to buy a state house. They can write their own constitution, but they're not allowed to own homes. How did they end up with such a confusing position over their core constituency. Well, I'll tell you how, because I've been listening uh, at Ratna and Waitangi, and that is Māori who always voted for Labour are saying, don't undo Nationals' policies. We're getting our settlements done, our grievances settled, more of our kids are getting educated, we're going to get the opportunity to have more home ownership individually or through our iwi. There's less crime. We're less victims of crime and less of our young people are in the courts. Thousands of them eat less each year. So don't talk about changing nationals' policies. And that left Labor only with Māori sovereignty. Now, I thought... I thought uh, Labor leaders have been well out of touch with most people about most things for most of their leaders, of whom there seem to have been several, over the recent years. But sovereignty is 1970s, Mr Little. In the 1970s, there were Māori angry about that and protesting on it. And you'd think the Labor Party, who pretend to represent that block of voters, more so than they did in any time in the last 20 years, if you look at their MPs, are so out of touch with their aspirations. It wouldn't matter so much, I suppose, if it was just that small group of voters. But actually, they're out of touch with most voters. With most voters. They still don't understand that the steady, sustainable growth of this economy is awakening a degree of aspiration and confidence in New Zealanders that only this government seems to understand and foster and grow. Right. And what's a piece of information that shows that? Well, we have the highest workforce participation rate ever. Right. Ever. Now, what does that mean? That means there's a bigger proportion of the working age population available for work 
than ever. So while the Labour Party is trying to find out again what work is, mainly because they haven't done any for six years, while the rest of the country has been busy, more people who are older, more women, more people who were on benefit, are putting their hand up and saying, we have confidence that if we get into the workforce, we can get a job. And that's what the high participation rate is, the highest ever, and as I might just comment, about 5% higher than it is in Australia. About 5% higher than it is in Australia. Mr Speaker, there's a couple of features of the economic situation at the moment which are promising, and I wouldn't say more than promising, uh, the prospect of sustainable growth. Uh, one is that uh, both Reserve Bank and Treasury have lifted their estimates of the speed limits of this economy. That is, the rate at which it can grow without causing excessive inflation. It was only a bit over 2 per cent, now it's close to 3 per cent. And in fact, economic forecasts show that we are, we will, we are likely to grow at just under 3 per cent for the next five years on average. And just imagine the impact of that. In the last year, 80 thousand new jobs. That's right. And if we have five more years of anything like that rate of job creation, right. with the rising real incomes, we'll have a community in pretty good shape. Fantastic. Mr Speaker, another aspect of this recovery that's starting to work well is business investment. There's been a lot of focus on the upsurge of residential investment. That's really important because we need a lot more houses. But business investment is steady and growing year after year. We've now had about four years of growing business, business investment contribution to growth and it's forecast to continue. Uh, <clears throat> and that is what un that capital deepening, that investment in better plant and equipment, better gear, better marketing offshore, that's what underpins the growth in our incomes. And Mr Speaker, the other is the stadium full of people who were lining up at the airport with their tickets booked to Australia, who have decided to stay, in, stay here and not catch the plane. Mr Speaker, everyone, I think, is surprised but should be pleased at the way that our net migration has held up, our positive net migration. 12, 12 months ago, we would have thought, yep, there's a bit of a surge here, a few more people coming in, a lot of Kiwis coming home, New Zealanders staying home, but actually it's kept on going. And it's one of the reasons we have, for instance, lower cost escalation in Christchurch than we expected, because the supply side of the economy is showing it can deliver the labour and the skills that we need. And Mr Speaker, uh, the rate of job creation and growth in real incomes is the product of a program this government executed in its first two terms and will continue to execute in its next two terms. That is my ongoing microeconomic reform that underpins business confidence. There is no growth until someone invests another dollar and employs another person. And that's what's happening. And Mr Speaker, finally, can I just uh, indicate that we will certainly be continuing our focus on cracking long-term dependency through welfare, through the justice system, through our changes in housing, because that's what drives government expenditure. What drives government expenditure is social dysfunction that we haven't been able to fix yet. Uh, and I want to compliment the public service on the results it's achieved. Less crime, more educational achievement, uh, digging out the problems around rheumatic fever and child violence, bringing them into the daylight so we can solve them. Mr Speaker, this government will be focused on results and measure itself by results, not just on the books, but in the community, because we figured out that what works for the community works for the government's books. And we look forward to working with the uh, public service to achieve even more over the next three years. We've done some of the easy stuff, and now we're starting to get to the real complexity the 500 families in Rotorua who have a parent with a custodial sentence and have been subject to assist notification and have spent at least three quarters of their life on benefit.
We need effective action with those families if we're going to have them participating in the workforce, like many others have put up their hand to do, and if we want to have a better community. So, Mr Speaker, we certainly uh, approach this confidence motion with some real confidence. Well done. Speaker.